from Anshe Svard, Bethel MF Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Akev, the radical Zionism of the Ramban. If we look in uh, Parshat this week, we have the privilege of reading about the second paragraph of Shema, Vahya Im Shamoa. There, a covenant between God and the Jewish people is outlined. It says, if we don't keep the commandments, we'll be banished from the land, wasted from the land, Baba Tem Meira, we'll quickly be banished from the good land that God has given us. So what's next? What, what, then what happens? Instead of saying what would happen in exile, God commands us that we should place the words of Torah on our hearts and our souls. We should uh, bind them as a sign on our arms. We should teach them to our children. We should write mezuzahs, write them on mez our mezuzahs. When we get exiled from our land and we go out, then we should put on tefillin, teach Torah, and make, do mezuzos? What's going on? So Rashi quotes the Sifrei, that's the Midrash, on Bami Bar Devarim, and he says, Even after you were exiled, after the verse says that you're going to exile, you should still do more mitzvot. You should be, uh, distinguish yourself with mitzvot. Hanuchu tefillin, asu mezuzot. should put on tefillin and mezuzah. K'deish tu yulachem, lo yulachem chadashim, k'deish tachzeru. So that the, the mitzvot should not be new to you when you come back. Chinu omar tzivi lach tziyunim. As it says, you should make markers for yourself. It's like a marker on the way back to Israel. You'll, when you come back to Israel, you remember, oh yes, we used to put on tefillin, and I'm putting on tefillin in Israel just like I did in exile. So the question is, the Ramban addresses it, I mean, tefillin is not something that's unique to, to uh, outside of Israel. The, the, the Mishnah says in, in, in Kedushin, in the Talmud, that the, uh, we don't do mitzvot in Israel that are related to Israel. But tefillin is not related to Israel. It's, not, it's, a, it's, a, it's an obligation on the individual, mitzvah haguf. And therefore, it should be incumbent upon us even outside of Israel. We're not putting on tefillin outside of Israel because we're getting ready to go back to Israel. We're putting on tefillin outside of Israel because it's a mitzvah that's incumbent upon us even when we're not in Israel. But the Midrash didn't seem to say that. And the Ramban believes that, that yesh ba Midrash has a sod amok, that actually there's a deep secret in this Midrash. What is the secret, as Ramban alludes to? The secret is, is that even mitzvot that are not related to Israel are still not perfect if they're not in the land of Israel. The, as the Ramban says here, Ikar katu ba'aretz. The main point of a mitzvot such as tefillin and mezuzah is to do them in the land of Israel, not outside the land of Israel. And that explains numerous verses. I haven't counted them all, but I would venture to say there are at least five times in the book of Deuteronomy where it says, I am commanding you these commandments, la sot kein b'kerev ba'aretz to do them in the land of Israel. Chapter 4, verse 5. Uh, chapter 4, verse 15, it says as follows. It says, uh, uh, God commanded me commandments, la sotchem otam ba'aretz, asher Hashem, asher atem ovrim sham ala God commanded me commandments to do them in the land of Israel. It says the Ramban earlier on in chapter uh, 4, verse 5, ikar ha-mitzvot kulan ba'aretz, the essence of all mitzvot, is to do them in the land of Israel. The full explication of this theory of the Ramban is found in, in the, the Parsha of Acharimot, Vayikra, Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 25, a long discussion of the Ramban. And there he says that, says in the Torah that if we act immorally, then we'll be chased out of the land. So he says, well, well what does immorality have to do with Israel? I mean, we're, we're commanded not to be immoral outside of Israel, too. But he says, no, it's different. Other nations, if they're immoral in their land, they stay in their land. But the Jews, if we're immoral in the land of Israel, Israel can't tolerate sinners. Because it's such a holy land, it can't tolerate it. And then he says that the truth is that all of the mitzvot are mainly for those who live in Israel. That's the essence of it. 
And he, he mentions a Sifri that says, the living in Israel is equivalent to the whole Torah. He mentions the idea that's alluded to by King David, that when you're outside of Israel, somehow it's almost like you're worshipping idols. Why? Ramban has a theory which I'm sure I don't fully understand. It's a mystical theory. But it's the idea that outside of Israel, the nations of the world and people who live in the, these countries outside of Israel are governed by outside forces. Forces, of course, controlled by God, but angelic forces, the, the angels of other nations, angel of Esau, the angel of, of uh, France, Germany, etc. And a Jew who's outside of Israel, he's, he's living under the, 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 the supervision of those angels in Israel. It's a more direct contact. As it says in our parsha itself, God's eyes are on the land of Israel. Now, what exactly does this mean? What is Ramban getting at? What is he claiming that somehow all the mitzvot are, are, are most appropriate in Israel? The main idea of mitzvot is really to do them in Israel. How are we to understand that, especially if we don't live in Israel? Theory number one. And not a mystical theory. Very simply, the mitzvot were meant to be done in total. To put on your tefillin, the mezuzah, and also to give tithing from your fruits. Also to go to the Beit HaMikdash, to the Holy Temple. Also to have a sabbatical year every seventh year, and a jubilee year in the fiftieth. Failure to live in that complete framework is living outside of the framework God had envisioned. You're putting on your tefillin, but it's not part of the total framework of the Torah that he had envisioned. That's the non-mystical explanation. Other idea is that Jewish history is guided so much, very particularly in the land of Israel. The Ramban and the Rambam are of the approach that, that if you're extremely righteous, then everything you do is guided by and punished and rewarded by God. When Moshe did one mishap, miss, uh, miss action, then what happened? He was punished. But you and I don't live that way. But if we lived in Israel, it might be different. In Israel, everyone somehow kind of lives on that level. The connection between what we do and God, it's a little higher. Or perhaps, perhaps it's just a feeling. In the land of Israel, there's a feeling that somehow what I'm doing is somehow being watched very carefully by God. What happens on a daily basis, which bus I get onto, what happens to me when I go in the army? How my career takes shape? It's being shaped much more directly by God himself. It's sort of a mystical idea. We have to ponder this. What did the Ramban mean? And we have to ask ourselves the question, is there this missing ingredient here outside of the land of Israel? Are we missing something more than simply we don't have all the mitzvot, all the laundry list of mitzvot that perhaps a Jew in Israel has? We can't do certain tithing and certain types of, of mitzvot? Or is there something else, something missing in every mitzvah we do, something missing in the very nature of our lives and our relationship with God? That's the challenge of the Ramban. That's the secret the Ramban doesn't tell us, doesn't fully explain. What does it mean, all these angels the Ramban is talking about? What he's saying is he'd like us to, to contemplate, as King David alluded to many thousands of years earlier, what is the missing ingredient? What's that secret missing ingredient that's only found in the land of Israel? Thank you for joining us here for our discussion here at the Anche Sfar Bethel Emeth Congregation. Join us each week for our discussion of the Parsha, various holidays, and various mitzvot. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asby.org.